Dear audience, today I will talk about CSIM certification. So what is a CSIM certification and what are the different requirements for it? So CSIM certification is a information security certification for managerial level. So in this one, there is a career pathway to learn how managers can manage the organization with respect to information security. So what is a CSIM basically? So CSIM stands for Certified Information Security Manager. So this certification is globally recognized and has a credential for information security professional, especially for managers in organization. Moreover, CSIM holders, they must demonstrate some expertise in security governance, risk management, program development, and incident management. So the question arises, why should we become CSIM certified? So the first thing is, we need to increase um, our earning potential. So if you have this one, so 20% more than uh, their own counterparts, they can earn more. Moreover, you can advance your career. The CSIM certification is recognized by organization worldwide and marked as an excellence in information security management. Moreover, you can gain valuable knowledge and skills in this domain. So the different domains we have it, we will discuss in the next slide, but most probably it will discuss about governance, risk management, incident management, and program development. Network with other information professionals like you can do networking, there's a community for CSM and you can have some you can have some meetings with the mentors and experts' opinion. So there are four different domains for the CSM. So let's discuss one by one what are the different domains for CSM domain. So the first one is very interesting and very important, and that is called information security governance. That how can we govern the organization with respect to the security how the security principles frameworks uh, will be implemented and introduced at organizational level so what should be the key topics usually the key topics we will discuss in this domain are uh, policies or related to the information security risk management and risk assessment legal aspects of the information security and business continuity plan and disasters so the modules which will be including means the chapters uh, which will be included is related to information security governance framework like uh, COVID, ISO 27001, NIST cybersecurity framework, the role of board of directors and senior management, organizational structure for information security. The next module could be uh, policy development and enforcement, compliance and legal requirements and risk management, metrics and reporting. Module two, 2 is about information risk management that if an organization receive a risk uh, with respect to the intruders or is with, with respect to the viruses or with respect to the malwares or uh, so how to uh, how to identify those risks how to analyze those risks and how to evaluate that that risk with respect to the uh, monetary loss and with respect to the reputation lost and the treats information security risk so the key topics usually in this domain uh, would be like risk identification and assessment, risk mitigation strategies mean how to reduce the risk, and then how to report and communicate with the concerned stakeholders. So uh, the domains or the modules in the domain tools are would be risk identifications, assessment and mitigation chapter, then business impact analysis, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, security incidents management, business continuity and disaster recovery planning, risk assessment methodologies and risk treatment strategies. So these are the chapters we are going to study in this domain number two. Now the third domain is about information security program development and management. So since managers need to develop a specified programs for, uh, for their organization and according to the needs of an organization. So they need to develop and implement an information security program that is aligned with their organization goals and objectives. So usually the key topics would be information security program design, security awareness and training for the employees, uh, security incident management in case of incidents happen. So how to manage by the by the people because 
uh, human is the weakest link of uh, security and security control implementations if we have it with respect to the policies so the chapters we would discuss in domain number three are program development life cycle how we can develop a program for information security uh, security awareness and training um, for uh, the department security architecture and design that what should be the architecture hardware and software security controls like access control what are the access control to be given to certain roles and then security incident and event management in case of incident how to reply to that one security operations like daily operations uh, security program governance right so this is the module three now we move to the the last domain which is the domain number four for the csm uh, which is information security incident management so in this one we respond to and recover from information security incidents and we see that what are the topics usually so we have the topics like uh, incident response planning um, like how to plan if, if there is an, in, in any incident incident identification and containment that if you you must know the manager must know that what kind of incident we have it and then how to recover and meditation like for example how we can recover from the loss whether it's the monetary loss whether it's like a, a data loss whether it's a reputation loss for an organization and the last but not the least is the incident communication and reporting so the chapters which are included or the modules which are included in this domain are incident response plan you must you must have a planning for it uh, incident identification containment and eradication mean how to reduce it and incident recovery and communication how to recover it if you what is your backup plan and how to communicate with your different stakeholders the fourth is incident investigation and forensics that from where that happens and same like the normal forensic we have the digital forensics to know the root cause of that one and then when we have incidents management tools and technology what technology tools we need to use it we must have a sound information about these kind of tools and then we have incident management best practices uh, available in our community of this system and then how to report it and how to analyze it with respect to the severity level so this certification is very um, easy as because there is no like you know technical things it's uh, basically is for managers so managers like they they usually play more with the policies regulations uh, and uh, um, soft skills they needed so uh, what are the eligibility for this one so for this one to be certified you need five years of experience but the exam you can give it anytime but the for the to be certified you need a five years of experience in case of you have master's degree in information security then one there is a waiver of one year for you as well so the number of questions mcqs all questions are mcqs which is 200 questions and you need to secure 450 scores or more to pass this exam uh, cost is uh, 575 dollars for uh, isaka members so what is isaka isaka is an organization which organize all these things it is information system audit and control association and for non isaka members it is 760 dollars so uh, agree to the uh, moreover you must agree to the isaka code of professional ethics because uh, uh, this could be like you know kind of ethical hacking not like a normal hacking so maintain your certification by completing the continuity uh, professional education cpa requirement so along with this one if you pass this exam then you need to for like you know to be certified uh, as you need a uh, 50 more dollars to uh, as an application fees then you will be uh, properly certified uh, cost with respect to other are there could be some cost for the materials like 200 dollars extra so total would cost would be like you know 1000 dollars for all these processes a to z uh, what are the different resources so i have collected some resources from you which is from the isaka system website so you can uh, you can make your hand dirty with these examples and then, then you have a roadmap but what is the roadmap how can you achieve it and some guidelines for it so conclusion so our conclusion is like earning the CSM certification is a valuable investment in your information security career um, it demonstrates your commitment to the field of information security and provides you with the knowledge and skill to excel in your role yes uh, we will also discuss some additional resources i will provide you with the case studies uh, with respect to the csm some real world examples some even mcqs with respect to the different domains so that we could like your hands on practice right and we will see some also best practices in the csm 
So I hope you like this video and in the coming video we will discuss uh, module by module and then we will see that which module is, uh, is uh, um, having more impact on another module and we will see that how we can practice and see and, and get the certification. So see you, take care, goodbye.